Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're hailing from. Uh, welcome to the George and Chris podcast this evening. Yes. Hi, George. Introduce yourself, please. And I'll do myself because <laughs> you're more important than me in this one. No, that's not true. That's not true. You you know you know this dream more than anybody that this is a team effort, whether people help directly or indirectly. Um, yeah, so I'm George Castro. I'm one of the maintainers uh, in Universal Blue and Project Bluefin, one of many. Awesome. I'm Chris Short. I am a open source contributor du jour, and uh, I am going to be working on Project Bluefin or Universal Blue and soon enough. You sound like my target audience. Yes. Tell me about the industry that you work in. I'm also going to interview you because... Okay, good. Um, I like this. Uh, you have a lot of people that like might... Like they don't know what KubeCon is, right? So let's, right, right, right. Yeah. So a tail, and then like for a few minutes, and then I want to. Then we'll get into the laptop. Okay. Cool. Um, yes. So I am a developer advocate at uh, a big cloud provider, <laughs> and uh, I will not be using this uh, framework laptop that we're going to be showing off with uh, Project Bluefin on it for work stuff, as I work for a company that is serious strict. Business. Yeah, very strict about security and, you know, separation yeah. of church and state, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I am somebody that's contributed to many open source projects over the years out of both necessity and desire. Uh, mm -hmm. are, the, we, uh, are we streaming on? Is, is the chat on in YouTube? Like, uh, I think so, yeah. All right, let me check. I just want to... Uh, let me... Keep going, and I'll check that. This is kind of a. Uh, this is our first time, everybody. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I'm popping open YouTube right now. Yeah, and, don't forget to mute. And I got to mute it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Happens to me every time. Hello, Chris Short. Let's go. Let's see where 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 are people coming from here. Yeah, where is everybody from? That, that awesome. Here. I see Kettleson. He's in he's in Florida. Another Bluefin co maintainer. Right. That's awesome. Uh, we have Mark from upstate New York, I think. Oh, okay. That's fancy. Hi, Edouard from Monterey, Mexico. Europe. Chachia, hello. Yeah. Awesome. All right. That's a All lot. right. Well, the way I know Chris is Chris and I have been working in the Kubernetes community for like a long time. And I'm now at the CNCF. Mm -hmm. uh, staffer there on the projects team. And you, so what happened? We were at OSS Summit and you yes. stopped by the framework booth. Explain, explain how you ended up with this laptop here. I, hang on. Let me uh, mute this one site. There we go. Um, so I had been thinking about a framework laptop for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. And, um, but my hesitation was like, I hadn't seen one in like, real life and i wasn't sure about like the quality of components like in the guts like great it's all interchangeable like that's the deal right like it, they yep. let you assemble and repair and replace everything from the battery to the cpu to the motherboard to the keyboard to the bezel on the screen around the laptop and everything so mm -hmm. it's a fully customizable laptop which is really intriguing to me because if it's going to be something I can use for a long time, um, I am more apt to buy that. So I've been a Mac OS like user forever and I'm not necessarily ditching Mac OS, but this yep. new framework laptop is going to become my uh, daily driver after the stream basically. Um, so yeah. yeah. And you know you were way around Linux. You've worked oh, yeah. for a large North American Yeah, Linux so company. like I've worked with Linux since the <laughs> 90s. Um, yeah. yeah, at one point in time, I had a job that said Linux system administrator. So I, I know my way around Linux in the enterprise. I know my way around Linux not so good on the desktop. And mm -hmm. why I'm on Mac OS. Right. So with that being said, part of it is because it's kind of like Android, right? Like you, they just give you everything and you got to pick and choose like which tools you use and which tools you don't and your day-to-day yep. -day use. Yep. And the framework with Bluefin was interesting to me from the sense of 
Bluefin has made some decisions for me that I like. And it's, you know, RPM OS tree based, which we'll get mm-hmm. into here in a little bit. But that's a model I've wanted to adopt on devices for a while. So yeah. we'd be slowly phasing over everything from whatever it is now, a lot of Ubuntu, I feel like, to Bluefin yep. over time. Yeah. Uh, and what is that everything? Uh, it's not a lot. Like I have... Um, a few VMs, a few Nooks that are now uh, basically doing cancer research, and uh, that's about it now. Like, and, not much. and a lot of containers in public clouds. A lot of containers. <laughs> a yeah, no, there's at least five Docker composers running on my NAS right now. I think mm-hmm. memory serves. Um, so yeah, like lots of containers. Uh, Kubernetes cluster is getting rebuilds this weekend um so Man, yeah we gotta get better hobbies yeah i know right like <laughs> so um but like i'm trying to take the easy route because as you may or may not know i'm the it guy for my entire family so uh, yeah i, I yeah. try to make my stuff dead simple <laughs> okay <laughs> and with that uh if you cut over so i you came over to my booth and you were yes. like, I just ordered a framework on the spot. <laughs> right. Man, Pretty wow. much. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to order one. Show me. Oh, you have one. Show me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and like, um, to be honest, George, uh, let me disconnect this battery's charge. Uh, I liked your setup so much. I got the same thing. You even got the orange bezel. I got the orange. Well, orange is my favorite color, right? Like, I'm yeah. going to post the pictures from putting this together later. Um, Dude, the green and it's, one. I, well, the transparent one was interesting, but they didn't have any. So yeah. that, that like thing is a get... myth. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Right? About it. I know, I know. I was just like, can I even <laughs> back order it? No. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, one of those alert things on, on eBay. Nice. <laughs> it's like yeah. transparent framework thing. That was like um, a week ago. They shipped that fast. Yes. Yeah, so it got here on Monday. However, mm-hmm. on Monday morning, I was told, you're going to London. Uh, yeah. You need to be there for the thing on Wednesday. And I was like, okay, oh, okay, we're going to do this now. Well, w- welcome, everybody. I see Gareth. Yes. Uh, I mean, I go way back. Joseph is here. So uh, this is a 13 inch framework laptop. It's definitely framework. You can see the yeah. logo. But it's like the one thing that I didn't know was how heavy is it? Right. Like, yeah, you, you can, yeah, like, my M1 MacBook Pro for work is a 13 inch laptop and it feels as densely packed as this one. Yeah. Right? There's yeah, no when like I, when I sit next to my coworkers and they have yeah. the M3 Max, like they mm-hmm. look, they both look great, you know? Right. Like, like yeah, it, it doesn't feel like, oh, there's no, no cheapness to it, right? Like, yeah. I've had, I have like Linux desktop companies and laptop companies have sent me stuff to test with and, I haven't bought any of them yet yeah. because every time I touch them, I'm like, I can get an HP that feels just like this for a third of the price. Right. So a framework laptop, while maybe a little over that, you know, thousand dollar price point is definitely intriguing to me because I can literally up like, oh, you know what? I didn't like the the, the Ryzen 5. I'm going to go to the 7, right? Like yeah. I need a bigger CPU. How many yeah. people can actually do that nowadays, right? Like... Unless you built your desktop or bought one from like Costco because you got a deal on a GPU or something, you know, like my, I might have done once but then returned. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you don't really have the opportunity to just pop a new CPU in your thing, especially yeah. on Macs where everything is soldered down. And on yeah. this, everything and you is can swap modular. out the whole main board. You can, go you can swap out the Intel. main board, the battery, yeah. the keyboard. What I really liked, um, I was a little disappointed when I felt this and I'm like, okay, this is the bottom's kind of plasticky. I was like, I wonder how this is going to feel on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Keyboard is aluminum. The top, the whole top cover is aluminum. So I was like, oh, this is going to feel just like the same thing. And so the keyboard, right? Like comparing it to a Mac, because that's what. Yeah, and you've only had it this week, right? Like, right. Like I've had it out of the box for just today. Oh, okay. So this is your (laughs) first. Well, I didn't know what, so like, A, yeah. 
I knew we were going to do a live stream this week. I didn't know if it was going to be on Monday or Friday, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't know. So when I was ordering it in Seattle, I was like, well, if I'm going to do a thing with George, I better make sure it works out of the box because it might be like he wants to do it, like literally me re re oh, ripping open the box and I would have a camera over my desk kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I thought, you know, all the scenarios we could do. So when you were like this morning, you were like, hey, just take it out, assemble it install make sure it works and then just done yeah like don't touch it yeah because i've we've seen the unboxing videos from other yeah. youtubers but what yeah we like want to talk to people about today i'm i'm going to put a blog post together with all the pictures and everything Ooh, so yeah yeah like i think like i love the ordering process it was nice and easy right like no pressure to upgrade or anything like that like straight up pricing you know like the ram was a little overpriced so was the storage but I wanted to buy their RAM and their, you know, storage to make sure it just worked 100%. because who knew if I was going to yep. do a live stream, but I also bought a cheaper 32 gig module from Newegg and I have 64 gigs of RAM with the Ryzen 5. I need to do that. <laughs> I, need yes. to, I need to up my RAM. I think I have 32 on mine. I think mm -hmm. we can go up to 64, right? Uh, no? Somebody told me today they put 96 on theirs. <sighs> yeah. I was like, well, how do you do that? And it, yeah. I think it's like a 64 and a 32, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. like two Chrome tabs. I know, right? <laughs> like you could have maybe two whole windows of Chrome. Yeah. With two tabs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what are, what are we going to go over this today? We're going to show Bluefin because um, uh, Matt just posted on Reddit that uh, Bluefin yes. will be a community supported um, image yes. where it's like they say, hey, and you can run this. You know, we won't officially support you, but there's a community behind it. So we're right. very excited to be uh, a part Associated. of this. Like, I never, yeah. I never thought this would happen. I, I know there are people that are how listening long, to this live How stream. long is it? Let's get a little background on the project. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. So like, yeah, yeah this is awesome. Yeah. Right. And, and like, trust me, I've kicked the tires on it over yeah. and over, right? Like Bluefin is currently installed on that nook, right? Oh, all And right. so I've used it for a few months on and off. Okay, but so you want to see the like, new the new stuff then that just landed in bingo RDM. GA. You just went GA with this. We just went GA. Literally, yeah. what Tuesday, Wednesday? <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a week. We were blocking um, it out. I'm tired. I was like, well, at least we got that out of the way. The rest of the week will be okay. Right <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's like everyone's excited again. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, can you cut over to the desktop here? So I gave you a tour at at the booth, so. and after we did that, I was like. Dude, we need to do this, but on video, so we can give people kind of right. the um, the thing that you got going on there. Yeah. So on, let me, uh, ditch the thing in the top. Right. Uh, the Sorry. fried chicken. Yeah. Goodbye. So we call uh we that's actually her name is actually Bluefin. Bluefin. Yeah. 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 So when we get to certain parts, mm -hmm. feel free to ask me questions on why we made those decisions and sure all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Um. So what do you, what what do we have here? Uh, I had to install Chrome to add the screen to the actual stream. So mm -hmm. uh, I installed Chrome and I went ahead and put my one password like add on and done. That was it. That's all yep. I did. I installed Chrome from the app store. The cool thing about Bluefin, like I love this about it, right? Like this little app catalog, everything comes from Flatpak. Yep. And if you go to your command line, everything comes from Homebrew. Oh, also, I installed Homebrew here, by the way. Oh, I was hoping to do that live. It's fine, though. Okay, no, 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 no. We can do it again. Oh, God. Does that work? Is this that impotent? I don't know. It We're is. about to find out. <laughs> um. So, yes, I understand. So, when you first open, I guess we should go over this MOTD real quick. When you first open yeah. your terminal for the first time ever, um, it gives you this prompt, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, highly recommended you install Bluefin or Homebrew here on Bluefin. Uh, and you have some other things that you can do and toggle on and off and configuration. But then, unlike a certain cloud provider that maybe might make you name the resource or just type confirm in the confirmation box, uh, it asks you to type in all caps, yes, I understand, enter. <laughs> so I got that from apt. Yeah, like. So the reason this is, and so. We always, Homebrew's always kind of been um, not very popular on Linux, right? It's that weird Ruby thing. In fact, I will tell you right out, it's it's a um, 
it's a compromise, right? Like I have to put GCC on the image and that's, I don't right. like that. Oh, and BK and M2 did that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and when we first did it, if you just run the install instructions from the homebrew upstream, mm -hmm. it just installs it. The problem is, is it puts homebrew in your path, right? Like your, your actual Unix path. Yeah. So yeah. one day my flat pack stopped working and I couldn't understand why. Hmm. So uh, ends up when you brew install FFmpeg, it grabbed this PK11 crypto library, right? Mm. And then when mm -hmm. a flat pack launches, it's like, I'm looking for PK11. And then it went in the Unix path, and then those didn't match. So kablamo, right? Okay. Um, so I, I filed a bug in an upstream with flat pack, and Simon McVitie, who is, oh, I don't know where he works now, old school Debian developer, mm. uh, been around, does a lot of work. A lot, you know, around Flatpak, a bunch of this stuff, a bunch of his work is here. Let's just say that if you're using Flatpak. Nice. Um, he was like, hey, you want a container? You're going to have to containerize it, right? And I was like, yeah, of course, of course. So I asked around, and then we actually reverted to a containerized homebrew because we want the homebrew ecosystem mm -hmm. of those packages. So right. especially in our field, there's a lot of stuff in there that we can't get in distro, right? No. Ubuntu, the latest LTS of Ubuntu shipped yesterday. And it doesn't have cosine. Like there's no co there's no six store packet. Like, right. Like, like I can't do my job. Like, <laughs> so my options there are install homebrew and go through all that mess. Right. And then, or add a PPA, right. Or W get a thing that I'll forget about. Right. And update. And then you end up in the kind of traditional Linux mess. And I didn't want to do that. And also modern operating systems need to come with those kind of tools. If they're going to, if you're, if you're a Linux developer and you're using this for our target audience you have to have all these tools and nope. they're all in homebrew it's actually yeah yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so um linux yeah. is actually prop they uh they publish their analytics i really enjoy that yeah and so homebrew is something i've used since i've started using a mac right like it's yeah. been they call it the missing package manager for Mac OS or Linux. They added yeah. Linux support a little bit later. And yeah. I love it because now it's one package manager for both systems. Yes. So I enjoy that. Yes. And also because we are going with flat packs, right? Right. That covers the graphical applications. Um, and homebrew will cover the CLI applications. There's two patterns that drive me nuts. And, and well, there's many patterns in normal Linux that drive me nuts. But, you know, when people say, oh, we need to add more flat CLIs and flat packs, it's basically mm -hmm. like, let's let's hope someone repackages 50,000 open source packages. Right. Yeah, yeah. And like, we ain't got time for that. Right. So no. we could just or because we want the ecosystem, the package manager itself. I don't care. Like, I don't care. Right. Right. Like you install stuff is ugly. Right. But what's important right. to me is that it's a blob. It's yeah. a blob. It's an OCI blob. Mm -hmm. Right. So it lives in a registry. So that's good. Right. And in November. Um, the OpenSSF and Homebrew announced that they're going to be doing um, full six store signing with like a full attestation and like salsa build level two. So wow. you will know that the binary on your system was built by that build system in GitHub, right? And the nice thing is everything is in GitHub. There's yeah. no distro pack. Like I don't have to figure packages.bluefin.org. Right. Right. Like nobody wants to, I don't want to know. No, no, no. I just go to GitHub and um, you can go watch the homebrew merge queue landing stuff. And you're like, oh, cool. There's all that stuff that will never get into my distro. Right. Right. Um, and that's yeah. what the nerds are using. So for yeah. me, for us, it's an ecosystem play. I don't want to over explain it, but I know a lot of people have questions about like homebrew. Why don't you use a real package manager? Well, so. <laughs> I think, I mean, me personally, I think the concept of setting up a typical apt repo or RPM repo is just an antiquated process that we should mm -hmm. get rid of, right? Like, I'm ready for containers everywhere. <laughs> you know, I know yeah. people... Especially on doing this, Right, yeah. like, right yeah. here, right now, I don't care. Like, abstract yeah. that away from me and just let it work. And if you can do it with brew on every OS I use, which is yep. your check the box, thank you, brew, yeah. um, you're going to get me... Because I can literally say brew list on one machine and type in brew install all that all those yeah. Packages. In fact, I'm going to have you do that now. I'm going to show you a few packages. So okay, cool. Hit enter. Whoa. Uh, okay. No, oh, it wants me. Oh, move the window the out of the way. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Come I on. wanted sudo. I think we're good. Yeah, I think I did everything that needed the sudos already. 
Oh, there, accept that. Yeah, so it tells you to install GCC at this point. Yes. So one of the reasons we say, yes, we understand is we tell you to ignore all this stuff, close your terminal and reopen it. Yeah. Um, we tried to automate this in a way, but we couldn't quite figure out. This is one of those things that I want to automate. And I'm mm -hmm. going to try to talk to someone at uh, type brew doctor. will tell you if you, mm -hmm. if you're working. All right. Uh, the first one I want you to install is brew install disc D Y S K. And then run that. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> D-Y-S-K. D-Y-S-K. Got yeah. it. And then run that. You threw me off with the Y. I was like, Yeah, that? like this is that's not pretty, but whatever. No. Uh, whatever. We're, we're here for disk. D-Y-S-K. Yeah. And then just run it. This is just a cool little thing that shows you how oh. much space you have. Yeah. Wow, that's way so, better than this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually there's a better DF in there as well. I know, I know. Yeah, there's so many like um. There's a better Chris LS Anna, now. Yeah. yeah, Chris Anna checks my uh, my grand boss and he goes, you ever notice that like all the Rust kids are rewriting all of Unix core tools mm -hmm. in Rust and they're better and yes. Apache license. So like, much yeah. better. Interesting. Um, so the nice thing, uh, and then brew list will show you that packages. So the nice thing here is um, we tie in this into the updates. So you are getting these packages updated every single day, nice. um, which is handy because um, you never want to be uh, behind on security updates. So nope. right. our methodology like, versus kind of traditional, you know, our target audience is normal people, which mm -hmm. will never open a terminal, right? You can give this to your mom. But yeah. here with this developer experience edition, you notice a VS code icon and stuff is, right. is on your dock was, uh, you know, I was hanging out with Brian Kettleson and he's giving me the tour of his desktop. And I was like, why can't everyone just have this? And then we realized, oh, we they could just can. make it so everybody has this, like that friend that has the hookup, right? That's what you want. And, but you don't want to get into the mistake of making a distro, right? Because oh, that always leads to pain and right. tears. So right. here's my thing. I've taken away the need for VS code altogether. Mm -hmm. I've gone, I've gone this route. I'm going to log into my code server, which will... Uh, don't, 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 don't hide that. Oh. All right. Well, whatever. It is hidden. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Now you've made me retype it. And ta-da. Off it goes. Oh, so you're running... In your home lab, you're running a remote Bingo. server. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is code server. That's it. Um, I haven't opened it from this computer. Yeah, so you got to tell it to trust and all that yes. stuff. Yes. I mean, but yep. this is essentially, it's, you know, it's put out by the coder folks. It's awesome. It's the exact same thing as VS Code. I can use this on my iPad if I want. I have all my extensions installed and they nice. update automatically. And uh, it runs on a VM next to Git T, which I think is awesome because. Link that in the show notes. I, yeah. I yeah. need to. Um, so yes, if I want to go work on anything of any of my open source stuff, this is what I use. So since I have Chrome open and it's available, I'm just going to tap that and hit install. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, your Here applications, your applications are isolated. So you have to right. opt in to let it read stuff. There's two ways this is done through a flat pack portal. Okay. Right. Or apps that don't do that through a flat pack portal. So <laughs> you do get a little bit of like when, if you're used to kind of my apps have access to everything, right. you are going to get little nitnoids like this. The good news is, um, since we kind of focus on the long term longevity of the thing, is once you do that, you should never have to touch it again. Great. Right. So it's kind of one of those things. I'm going to punch you in the face, but They're only just... for the first few days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine, right? Like, yep. there's always going to be it's Linux. Yeah, and then, uh, but you have solutions. Yes. So, uh, it's... hit your hit your Windows key or whatever your super key, and then type flat seal. I did. It's open right here. Yep. Now this will let you manage the permissions and things of awesome. all of the Flatpak apps. So you will find so this is going to be Chrome, Chrome, and then you are going to. Oh God, I don't want to do this live. Uh -oh, um, we're doing it. Uh, does anybody anybody got the PWA shortcuts? It's like uh, config. Man, I gotta open my Unix. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're hurting. 
And you can't just search for this, can you? They make that too. You free. can. It's just you have to type in. Uh, oh, God. It's a variable or something? Or? No. Yeah. It's like under under other fi file system. Oh. You just had to go off the beaten path right off the bat. Thanks. I, dude, of course. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to do this right now. We can yeah, do I, let's do this later. Like, yeah, I, I, like we've got the. But like, I'm just saying, I'm, like, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and be configuring v, VS Code. I've already done that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna actually, what I do in, in GitHub, installed. I hit period. You know that. I mean, folks, I, yeah, you hit period you can do in that GitHub. Too. Yeah. Um, but if you're like me and don't yep. necessarily want to be dependent upon GitHub. Yep. So if you copy and paste that error, you will end up on the Flatpak forums, the Flat Hub forums. Mm -hmm. and uh, you will find a post written by me on how to enable all that stuff. So I have written this down before. However, okay. it would be baller if we included thing, links like that. Yeah. And, ooh, that'd be a great tip for the MOTD. Let's go back to the MOTD real quick. Okay. Yeah. yeah what do you got? Uh, so uh, no, just close the terminal and reopen it. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, hang on. There we go. Yeah, because it's not going to bug you. And there's a there's a switch there if you want to turn it on and off. So yeah. a, a, one of the reasons we wanted to do this is like originally Ubuntu came out with like a message of the day mm -hmm. and they put ads in it. Right. right. And then everyone's like flaming them for it. But yes. like when I worked there, it was like, oh, an MOTD, wouldn't it be great? Your system administrator could give you, you know, yeah. information. Hey, everybody do this thing or da, 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 da. I can't wait to see what the community does when they build this entire, yeah. you know, thing. Because you could run it by your, like you could run the server if you want and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And instead, it was like everyone's just like, how dare they try to make money? Right. So like everybody hates this MOTD in Ubuntu. So anything that Linux people hate, I put it in. Um, so I was like, we could just use an MOTD for good. So we put docs there. You right. see there, there's a link to the landscape. Mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll tell you how to create your first Kubernetes cluster, where to find the docs, you know, uh, how, how to awesome. give money to FlatHub. Like we can actually use the MOTD for good stuff. And this is especially useful on Bazite. Because they put game gaming. Yes. We we're like, I, it should be like the, the tip of the game in a loading screen. You know how your PlayStation yes, does that? Yeah. Exactly. I like it a lot, right? Like that's going to help me more in the long run. Yeah. Speaking of Bazite, I want to get into that a little bit later. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. We're going to get into Steam that. and bit. some games. I want to know how I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it is an iGPU, but it's the AMD one's pretty good. So you're going to be able to get some good gaming. No, all I want to be able to do is play Civilization Six. That's it, right? Like oh, that's the minimum requirement. That should, that should run. That should. Run oh yeah, awesome. no, it should be right? like it runs awesome on my iPad when it's actually supported. Um, huh. So yeah, like it should be fine. All right. Well, you're gonna click on that same icon and you're gonna type Steam and go, and then that should work. Okay, the same flat seal dealio. No, you don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to do any of those. No, you're gonna go into that App Store thing that you. Oh. Okay. Right there. Now type Steam in the search. Steam link. And then Steam. click on that one. Okay. And then you're going to go. Woo. -hoo. Now explain to me how you're handling flat pack. Yeah. So this is also speaking about things that annoy me about normal Linuxes. Yes. Um, in other distros, there's like a CS as flat hub. Click oh, that, that drop down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to yeah. do that. Um, Sorry. but don't load that. Cause that's going to download a client and yeah, that's going to be oh, a hot Jesus. mess. Do that later. Yep. Um, yeah. So, normally, so in here, much gnashing of teeth on the internet is like, do we put flat packs here? RPMs? Right. Because remember Where traditional put... Linux distros are conflating system packages mm -hmm. with end user packages. And we Bingo. are purposely as part of this model moving away from that. Right. It's like, nope, you're going to get this. And now your system packages, you don't touch. Those are going to be image based. Yes. And you're just going to, you're going to have that managed experience, right? So mm -hmm. um, we had to get this, this right. This is, and then on top of that, we had to decide, are we going to do user flat packs, which you can install in your home directory or do your system flat packs. Mm. And then each of those has its pros and cons, right? So right. Like, yeah, if you install in your user directory, then like you get it, right? But then if you share it with your wife and she has her own account, yeah. she's yeah. not going to get those apps, right? So mm -hmm. they're like, okay, so she installs Chrome and now you have two versions of Chrome which we, we will keep all of them up to date, but then it just becomes kind of this mess. So okay. we're kind of defaulting to system packages. And if you prefer user packages, you know how to, you know, you know how to Linux, right? So you, right. you know exactly. how to protect that user. And that makes sense to me, right? Like, yeah, 
it's entirely possible my wife might have an account on this box. Who knows? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. who really knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also remember, when we're talking about Bazite and Bluefin and stuff, mm -hmm. they are both still 99% Fedora, right? So right. I'm a huge gamer, but I game on Bluefin via the Steam Flatpak, right? And I'm yeah. 7900 XTX, and it maxes out my 21 by 9 monitor. We're playing Helldivers every night, and it is probably the S tier, you know, yeah. 140 for her. It's like maxed out. It's right. beautiful. Like it's oh. just the perfect experience, right? But right. Bazite is um, very, very specific to gamers, right? So if you have the VR headset, trying to get Ooh. that work with the flat pack, then then it gets a little, it's a little hairy there, well, right? Plus they are supporting handhelds and a bunch of stuff. So in that case, it right. makes sense. Yeah. So what I tell people is like, if if you are a dedicated gamer, like. Me in college would have ran Bazite, right? Right. And then I got a job and I have to run Bluefin, right? Like yeah, that's kind of yeah. exactly. thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But remember, 99% Fedora. The reason we don't call this a distro is we are shipping config as an atomic thing on top right. of Fedora, right? So it's right. I this is the equivalent of me going to your house and being like, this is the hookup. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And then we do change some things in Fedora. So uh, see the minimize, maximize, and close buttons. Yeah. Like in vanilla gnome, they don't have that. They no. just have close. Close. Um, because they want you to use workspaces more. Right. right. Um, in the top no, right. I hate workspaces to be honest with you. <laughs> so I love workspaces, but you know, I also well, have the, I mean the to the an extent, buttons. right? Like yeah, I, I probably should have the the Chrome session on another workspace that I'm not yeah using directly. So like that'd be good for that. Mm-hmm. But like, and this will help you if you look at the top left, not the Fedora logo. See mm -hmm. that pill looking thing? Top left. Yeah. Yeah. Click on that. Yeah. That's like your workspace thing. So as you add more workspaces, yeah. this gives you like that little, I don't know what Mac people call it, expose, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Whatever yeah. It is you no, I like it. Whatever you people uh, use. Whatever it is you use. Yeah. Whatever it is you use. Can you just toss this over? No, you can't. Oh, that's fun. I think if you su uh, super out, like click it again. Right. And now I think, can you toss that over to a separate workspace? Ooh. Yes. Yeah. There cool. You go. Okay. Yeah. That just And works. I think by default we have dynamic ones, so you can create as many as you want. Nice. I'm a. Number I do four is. static. I'm old school. You know, oh. it's like four. That's my jam. Yeah, I'm not sure what a screen sharing is doing with my uh, mouse icon. It looks a little like reversed and skewed. Yeah, but it, it looks fine on the laptop itself. I don't know what the okay. deal is. So good to know. Fix four. That's the way. Brian Brian settles it. Um, hit escape. Yep. And all right. So close this. Another another area where we make some changes. Top mm -hmm. right. If you can click that menu. Oh, you can close cool. Steam now and just leave it in the background. It, yeah. Yeah. Just get rid of that. Yeah. Flat seal. Close that. This. This okay. I like. So we made some changes here is mm -hmm. um, from the default. So first of all, there's this tray icon spec that's been around the Linux desktop forever. It's like horrible. Like I had to work on it with Ted Gould. Mm. Anyway, everyone wants to get rid of it. But like all the old apps like Discord, Steam and stuff, it still oh, use this legacy still, tray. Yeah. So like Gnome and Fedora, turn it off. And I turn it back on because I'm just like, I just don't care. I'm just like, whatever. Yeah, like just get <laughs> out of my face. Right. So I turn it, we like we turn it on. Uh, the way we manage GNOME extensions is we package them. And, and if they are in Fedora, we do that. That avoids um, the extensions. Oh, I upgraded. Why, why are all my extensions broken? Because we uh, yeah. And also, point. for those of you that are nerds out there, for Bluefin GTS, we default to Fedora minus one. So you are actually now on Fedora 39, okay. even though Fedora 40 comes out. Comes out. So... Uh, we won't cover this I'm now. I'm okay you, with that. <laughs> yeah, you you can always rebase to to a newest image, but right. Yeah, we've always all been of the opinion Fedora moves like really fast, right? Like it moves incredibly uh, fast. Yeah, so yeah. like being minus one, and they also backport the kernels to the older versions. So like, right. you're never gonna be on a like, like if you look at Enterprise Linux kernels right now, they're like what five dot fifteen or something. If like you're, you're lucky. gonna be, yeah, you're gonna be like a point <laughs> releaser behind at most, uh, and that's that's nice. The reason is is I like to keep the nice slower cadence. I'm trying to find that Ubuntu sweet spot, which is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a little bit slower than Fedora. It used to be the other way, right? Now they're reversed. Yeah. Fedora is faster yeah. yep. and Ubuntu is more of the, um, in the middle, right? But not quite, but I also don't want an LTS or an enterprise Linux, right? I want right. 
I, I want a, a little bit there. So that's how we kind of do it. And what's really nice is when you do get the upgrades, you'll go from mature version of Fedora to mature version of Fedora. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go through the first half of the cycle, which can be, depending on your hardware, that may or may not be what you want. What's right. really great about the Atomic model, you can rebase forwards and backwards mm -hmm. um, after you've gone forwards. So um, it's kind of once you've decided to go forward, you can go back. And that's the equivalent if... if it's very, it's very important because you can't yeah. just do that on Mac OS. Yeah, and also normal, like if you had Ubuntu, right? It's like going to LTS and then you're like, oh, I need a new thing. And then you upgrade to the point release. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back, that's a restore, right? Oh. Or reinstall. Ouch. And sure, like but that's like five minutes if you're lucky, right? And there's yeah. always something. So like yeah. being able to, and you can also pin these these snapshots. So boom, boom, boom. In addition to that, because we do build these as container images, we have 90 days, at least 90 days. That's what the SLA says. So okay. we can never say over 90 days, even though they do hold a bunch. Um, you can always rebase to any one of those previous days, right? So if you're nice. like, you know, this thing used to work and now it doesn't. We've had people do this, especially with Bazite. Because mm -hmm. the gaming stuff moves fast. It's like, what day oh, did yeah. this break? You know, and right. they they will go, people will go and they'll figure out the exact day. And mm -hmm. that helps us narrow it down. All right, what commits did we change in that part of the thing yeah. that day? Oh, okay, boom, 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 boom. And that's why, that's why the Bazite team could be really efficient. All of our users, first of all, are on the same image. Right. So right. it removes a lot of the, well, on my machine, right. Which yeah, still can yeah. happen. People layer stuff. But oh, when sure. we see a status, we know right away. Right. Like, Oh, oh right. yep, you layered right. that. That's why that's busted. You know? Um, so that also means our community, when they report an issue, right. Their reports are like way more. Yeah. They don't get lost in the noise. Right. Because right, right. It's relatively straightforward for someone to check it. Right. And almost every time it comes up, someone's like, yep, I can see it right away. Yep. And then they're, already and then as soon as kyle pushes he can click the build button if he wants or if not the automation just builds a new image the next day and you'll just get it in the next update and that's how application containers are managed in the real world right so having that <laughs> having that in as our operating system world. yeah like as our operating system is now that's clutch right like that that's what i want right mm -hmm. um that's why we we can really punch above our weight right there's been 172 drive-by contributors. And at any given time, there's about five full-time um, okay. contributors. And uh, we have a concept called chill ops where sometimes people say, hey, I'm in. I went hard for six months, right? And then I'm going to go, we, we put them in chill ops, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, we don't want this to be a job, right? We want, right. We want nice, healthy rotation. That's uh, good. And, and that kind of stuff. So no, really, the, the only constant is me being around and that's getting it. That's yeah, cool. like it's gonna be time for me to chill up soon here. If uh yeah. yeah, if yeah, if a lot of my communities did not have the concept of co-leads, I yeah. would I would not be a lead in very many things, right? Yeah. Like yeah, that's why I that's why yeah. I say I'm a I'm a co-maintainer, right? Because there'll be a yeah. there will be a cycle where I'm not here, right? So we try to have right. a flat like, structure. Yeah, and and to be clear, uh, I'm referencing the Kubernetes contributor communications team. Kaslin Fields and I are co-leads for that. Yep, and like sometimes Kaslin's busy with actual real world stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it's me. And when something hits the fan in Kubernetes land and Kaslin's gone, okay, it's me. Yeah, uh, but vi vice versa also applies. Sometimes I have to go do stuff like yep, go to London with two hours notice. Uh, or however long it was. I um, sympathize. No, but it's poor, it's one of those man. things where it's like, oh, Kaslin, it's you this week. Sorry. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. So if you were just in London, uh, trivia tip, Bluefin was the building that Canonical used to have as an office in London. So that's kind of the, because the image originally was called Ubuntu, but I can't call it that, right? Once yeah. I realized, once we realized it was pretty awesome and people would use it, we're like, mm -hmm. oh, we better come up with a name. Um, Anyway, this pill section here, GS Connect, we add by default. What is GS Connect? Uh, that is, you will install Ooh. an app on your phone. Okay. And then that will let you like message through it, send files to it and stuff. Basically, <sighs> yeah, phone <sighs> phone to OS integration out of the box. You got to have it. Like, Yeah, I mean, pretty much. It's like a must have for me nowadays. Yeah. And then, oh man, dude, we have this tool that we recommend called LocalSend. LocalSend.org. Someone want to? 
check that out. It's just oh, a cool yeah, little yeah, yeah. app that just lets you zap stuff throughout mm-hmm. your network. That's I've got that calling. on my phone. I think yeah. you told me about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so GS Connect, definitely put that on the radar. Uh, the KDE, so that's called GS Connect. Mm-hmm. KDE version is called K Connect. Is it K Connect? KDE Connect? Something I don't know. Like it starts, of course, it starts with a K, and this one starts with a G. Right. Um, yeah, but it's really nice because it's like cross desktop and like this is what people use. It's really, I don't understand why it's not there by default. But like 2024 mobile integration is finally here at the Linux. What am I using on an iPhone to make KDE connect is what it's called. Oh, okay. Fine. That should work on an iPhone, right? I'm pretty sure they Uh, have it. I mean, that's what's there. That's why I was asking. Yeah, that's what you want. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, and Sunday says it has a clipboard sync. Woo. Baller. Oh, yeah. very nice. Okay. So one thing I want to do, I wish they would do this. I, I need to file this. Is I hate that it says GS Connect. Just say like iPhone 6. Right. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> so like, even when you pair it, it doesn't say the name. And I wish it. Oh, look at that. See, I'm doing it. Here we go. Except sharing with Fedora succeeded. All right. So now what's it say? Okay. Just yeah, click on the, the drop name of my th- phone. Oh yeah, you could do the do the business. Okay. Nice. Is it ringing? No, it just vibrated a lot. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I can and then if you that. slide over to the right, you're gonna find Tailscale, which is uh, the VPN solution. So VPNs yeah. are kind of um, a source spot here on Atomic Distros. So um, we're gonna stumble on this if you make me log in. I'm just no, to... no, no, no. We, we, okay. oh, no, we, we don't have to. Like anything that makes you have to type in a password, let's just not do that. Okay. Um, so I think let's just do a feature highlight, you know. Yes. Um, but I do have this in the docs. For some of this stuff, especially tail scale, you will have to use the command line app to configure it. And then yeah. this becomes a toggle afterwards. Yeah, it's not it's not as nice. So uh please donate to this extension. <laughs> so that yeah. you can it nice and rocking and I rolling. Mean... But, yeah, the settings here are great, but the fact that I can't like log in, there's no login button. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, hmm, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, on Atomic Distros, VPNs are kind of problematic because a lot of them need access, right? So, hmm. um, usually in in like upstream Fedora Silverbill, you have to layer that if they offer an RPM. The reason I chose Tailscale is uh, Tailscale. <laughs> Right. Is awesome, but they also recently started offering Mulvad through it. So I just pay for Mulvad through Tailscale, um, and that adds the the exit node for the VPN. So when I'm on the road, okay. I'm always through Mulvad. Yeah. I did not know that. I yeah. will be and fixing it's that later. Five dollars a, a month instead of five can euros you, per can month. You so it's pick a location. Cheaper. Does it actually let you yeah. pick a location and everything? Yep. yep. I'm paying so 120 dollars a month for that right now. You are? <laughs> yes. Or what not a month, but a year. Sorry. Oh, okay. That right, would that be would nuts a out. month. No, yeah. I'm not paying $120 a month. Yeah. For that. That'd like, be oh, man. Absolutely Enterpr- absurd. Enterprise grade. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah so I, I like that because it's actually cheaper than normal Mulvad. Because if you go to their website, it's five euros. <laughs> right. So like, yeah. So I go into my tail scale. I pay five bucks a month. All my, all my devices can do an exit node. So when I'm actually doing work on the airplane and stuff like that and doing container business, it's mm-hmm. actually all executing on my home lab. And I'm just that's awesome. Yeah, because Delta Wi-Fi is free now. Ding. So having tail scale. Some layers, exclusions apply. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's been totally free the, uh, every time I fly, but still a road. Dude, I had to pay there. money. I mean, it's cheaper now, too. But yeah. I had to pay money going to Paris. I had to pay money going to London. And on the way back from London, it did not work at all. Oh, that's yeah. Um, okay. Any questions about the top right? Actually, let's see. Any audience have questions or things? You yeah, I mean, yet? like here's Bluetooth stuff. Oh, Garrett says pausing media when phone calls come in is really handy. Oh, that's awesome. That has not happened to me. I I need to make that happen. Oh, yep. and yeah, that reminds me. I need to get like my Sonos stuff working with this. Yeah. So I have the. I'm wearing them now. The Sony headset. And they mm-hmm. connect fine. And it says the model number and stuff of your headset underneath on that little pill. I really like that. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, what do you got okay. going on here? Oh, there's a lot of shit in here. Yeah. Yeah. That I have no idea what this is. Or this, for that matter. That's kind of creepy. This, these are vacuums. That's obviously a TV. Vacuum cleaners? 
vacuumed, like robotic. Oh, like robotic. Vacuum. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I was like, man, you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess I have to also put something in discovery yeah. mode. Uh, Joseph said this. I want to make sure we get this on a video. A lot of VPN providers do provide a WireGuard config, and you yes. can import that into Network Manager. So I actually do that on my NAS. Great point. Yeah. Great tip. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really nice. Yep. Now let's look, uh, let's look top left here because this is where the real magic happens. So this, I was, I was interested in this little deal. So we go from this, we go over here. Yeah. Huh. Okay. This is cool. Yeah. Like this makes life a little easier, but then I saw this. Yeah. Container. So save that one for last. Okay. Save that one for last. So like um, the app grid is kind of obvious, right? Yeah. Like, so is about my system. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So it was about my system. Like, I hope you've seen this. Dialogue yeah. You can change your, change your host name to something cool there. All that good yeah, stuff. Like I thought yeah. I changed it, but I guess not. Um, I've decided like I used what? Looney Tunes names. So. Oh yeah. You gotta. Yeah. Michigan J for all is the name of this one. And uh, yeah. So like, just let everybody know, George said, Hey, it's V39 of Fedora. Uh, absolutely oh. correct. Here's, Here's my tag. Nice. Here's my uh, CPU, GPU dealio. 64 gigs. In a, in 64 a like gigs that. of RAM. Did you ever believe we would ever no technology? No. Right? Like I remember when 64, <laughs> Four megabytes of RAM yeah. was a huge deal, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, let's see if like, there's anything here. Yeah, but I this is just the normal the normal settings this that is you the get. Normal, like yeah. Yep. From settings. strong recommend. There's a search box in the top left on the settings. If you always forget, because I'm like, uh, uh huh. Yeah. Yep. There's extensions. Yep. I'm we'll not, do that one. I'm, I'm not sure what that opens. I know what system monitor. So opens. this is your GNOME extensions. People have okay. opinions about GNOME extensions. So here's where you configure them. Like if you're mm -hmm. like, I want to turn off the blur. Caffeine, you notice we added. You could turn that one on. I want you to turn that one on so I could show it to you. Okay. Yeah, just click on that button oh, to make it blue. Sorry. I'm not a... There you go. Now go back into your top right thing. Okay. <gasps> and Ooh. you see that caffeine? That will keep your computer... Uh, awake. Awake. Yeah, yeah, without the lock screen. Well, so. I noticed that hibernating was like enabled by default, and that's annoying as hell for me. So, I oh, you mean off. suspend? Yeah, hibernation. Oh, yeah, suspend. Is... Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah. I would love to make that off by default. Yeah. So, <laughs> if what that's I do... my first contribution, I would be happy to do. Yep. That. Uh, you want to do that now? I can show you where that is. Okay. Sure. No, I mean, I know where it is. I already did. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Like, I was yeah. just like, no, I cannot deal with that in a live stream. Absolutely not. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is useful. I use caffeine a lot to make sure my screen doesn't lock when I'm watching yeah. stuff or, or user themes, Windows. Yeah. I have my homebrew oh, merge queue that I watch live bunch. all day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, some, some of these are default. Um, what Status we're going to do indicators. eventually, I like that. Okay. Is have extensions in the config applet. That will say nice. You know, okay. we our community recommends this, and we'll put like the baller ones in there, um, because you can't get extensions through the app store. So that's like annoying. Could I change that to Bluefin? So here's <laughs> here's the thing. So like like that kind of overlay is like very dated to me. Oh, so the really? first so we should we I actually turned it off on purpose. Okay, but I wanted to ensure the Fedora got the branding right. Right. Um, so that's why it's a Fedora F on the. Uh, got it on the logo menu. So okay. they don't ship everything I'm pointing out to you are like the differences between us and and upstream silver blue. But like and you that can little search applet, for new ones. Yeah. Oh, so wow. this is also great. Um you can search for extensions in here, but it doesn't have screenshots or anything fun. However, if you open up your browser and go to extensions like gnome.org, yeah. it has screenshots and ratings and you click and then it'll open that thing and then it'll install it. So, oh, whoops, I gotta actually open a new window. <laughs> yeah, all right, there we go. Extensions. Dot, no, yep, extensions with an S. Yes, that one. Ooh. Okay, what's your favorite one? That's so I would default. definitely not do popularity because that screen hasn't changed in like five years. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would figure that. I just changed the downloads. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, uh, let me see if we can find a good one. Open weather. I like, I, I want yeah, okay. weather. You I want, want weather. weather. All right, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Hit install. 
Okay. Open XDG open. There you go. Extension, Extension manager, manager hit open. Yep. Okay. What'd you do? So usually uh, click on the notification. The extension manager is behind your browser window. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this one's unsupported. What is unsupported. what is up with this one? That is weird. You could do that, but let's uh, go back Ooh. and then just search for weathers. Let's see if we can find a nice supported one. That's what we want. Okay. Yeah. Let's. It's hard for me to get used to where the control key is on the keyboard. <laughs> just, I just watching Mac people on these things. I'm so it's, entertained. It's like I hit Alt so many <laughs> times, I can't even tell you. And then, like when I want function, my brain just flips. Like I might yeah, actually yeah. Re like re relay them out. Uh, which you can do. Yeah, I set my caps lock as an extra control. Actually, that's. Yeah, I might do something like that. So just weather here would be fun. Yeah, let's see. Let's look at that one. Oh, that looks sexy. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> sexy. I've never called software sexy and actually. Oh, GNOME you know, with that blur. Oh, come on. Oh, you love it. No. Yeah, and I don't know if you noticed the uh, the wallpapers change day and night, so they follow like a cycle. I I love that. Um, yeah. you're on I, spring and it's summertime. That'll change to a summer. Yeah, like so like seasonal. I actually made, or you sent me the link to all the artwork, and I was like, "Is all this stuff on, in the OS? Like, yeah, is, is it baked in?" And I went and looked, and I'm like, "It is. Yeah, okay, it is. cool." And it does change. I saw it change uh, yeah. between turning it on and coming yeah. down here. So yeah, switch back to the Accenture Manager because window uh, management is uh -huh. hard sometimes. Oh, there you go. Um, we go. in GNOME, uh, ah! <laughs> also unsupported. <laughs> That God seems strange. It. Yes, it is. The, uh, um, that is strange. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's try mm -hmm. it this way. Uh, Gnome moment. Close the browser. Okay. Close uh, the... Yeah, kill this thing. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, go. Nope, nope. Go back. There you go. That thing. And then just Search. type weather in here. This should only show you the ones that are supported. That works. Yeah. Okay. Display weather o'clock is good. I've heard. It. I've I've used that one. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh no, this GNOME extension is unmaintained, and then you go and you find, and it's like open weather refined or, mm -hmm. yeah, extension yeah. name actually maintained. All right. So where did it? Go? Okay. Now go back to installed. Okay. Oh, the tat. Nope. Oh. The tab on the top of the window that says browse. Nope, left. Got left it. more. No, I'm clicking it. That's oh, no, that's browse. That's You're on browse. You want to go to installed. Oh, okay. Right there. Yeah. Uh, and then scroll weather. down to you find weather. It's oh, that's it's on. This is prop. Um, you okay. probably have to log out and log back in. So oh, well, that's fine. That. Yeah. Later, I'll do it later because I'll break. Yeah, because we'd have to rejoin the session and stuff. Yeah, I don't want. Okay. To do that we got Anyways. that i apol i apologize that you had to experience the gnome extension ecosystem this way uh it's fine <laughs> you know i mean this is what we consider good right it's like, yeah exactly it's amazing and i'm like kill me <laughs> um <laughs> all right so uh cl click on the fedora thing again okay uh we're gonna do, we're gonna do uh containers next and then also open the terminal which is either there or is also up there yeah and then move this off to the side yep so this is tixis p-t-y-x-y-s it's pronounced tixis tixis uh, tixis it. yeah but it's just i just say it's the terminal yeah um, like i i hadn't heard of it and yeah you probably didn't know you probably yeah, didn't I had know. no idea what this oh was. so before we go into this do a windows key space super space wait what? No, at the same time oh sorry Yep. Now type Chrome or something. Yeah, this is like your file light, your search oh, light thing. Yeah, this is like okay. an extension which I found out recently, and I was like, we have to have this. Yes. So super space, really quick, will give you a thing, and it'll search all your stuff. Uh, and then we bound it to the same key that you you're used to on your Mac. So that's baller. Um, so this is now where the container thing comes in. So you're on a host terminal, and you're using Brew. Right. Mm -hmm. However, there are going to be cases where you want a pet container or something like that. So oh, yeah. uh, we give this called Box Buddy. Podman mm -hmm. um, is 
crucial to the Linux desktop now. That is a container runtime, and that's what lets us run everything from everywhere, right? So okay. click plus, and then you are going to create, call this test or whatever. I'll name it George. Yep. And then click the drop down and pick what you want. Uh, hmm. Does the audience have a preference here? We've got them all. Something small, I recommend Alpine. Sorry, Alpine. <laughs> Alpine. Like that? Any F1 fans in the crowd? And if you're an Alpine fan, I I do apologize. Uh, um, let's see. I'm going to do 316 just because. Don't, uh, don't worry. We're going to talk about the KDE thing here in a minute. If you like everything you're seeing here, but you want KDE, Aurora is the name of that. Um, but okay. that will be a separate... Um, I haven't used KDE since the 90s. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm missing. Yeah. Like, I used it in the 90s because it was actually a little bit better than GNOME or easier to use than GNOME. Yeah, I, I used KDE 2 in the past, way when I was Yeah, older. like way back in yeah. the day. Yeah. yeah. So if you like all this, but you're like, I want KDE, got you covered. It's called Aurora. Someone toss the URL in the in the chat, please, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, well, I mean, I could. And we literally build it out of the same repo. Right. It's just instead of from Fedora Silver Blue, the pattern is from Fedora Kino White, which is their KDE version. So beautiful. It's beautiful. Some awesome people really made this really nice and slick. Um, yeah, and then click create. <laughs> Boom. You don't know. And then you gotta wait called. for this. So this happens the first time you create it. We have uh in the Ublue OS org. We have pre-made distro boxes for you that have the packages installed to allow for instant launch because I okay. hate this. Um, and then we do put some convenience features in there. Like I make a Wolfie box that's like amazing and it has like pass through. And Well, why didn't a, you tell me to spend that up? Uh, because I don't think it's listed in the GUI. And oh. um, we got a lot of duct tape going on here at this point, you know? Um, okay. So I'm kind of I'm kind of showing you the treaded path. Uh, we do manage these uh, these boxes. Uh, oh, actually, do this. Hit Control Alt U, and something is going to happen in the background. So if something happens, mm -hmm. so um, I also like to have ephem ephemeral containers. And hit Control Alt F for me also. I love to have ephem ephemeral containers because sometimes you're like, <laughs> blah 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 blah. You know, what, what version? Uh, close this. This is a bug. Mm. <laughs> And now control alt u again. Control alt u. Yep. And the Fedora one came oh. out fine. So yeah. control alt u and control alt f are alias to a Fedora toolbox and a Ubuntu toolbox. So you can that's rad. If you never use these, they they're never on your system. But what we wanted to do here is like sometimes it's like I gotta see what's in Ubuntu for a package or I need I to love that search. because oh my god, I have yeah. to do that so often. Yep. Yep. Like, what is it in this and what is it in that? Just because Right, of, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you could be like, here are the five cloud providers I care about. Assign them to keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, now close them all again and then launch launch one or two. Like, is there a, what is Alt F4 will, will, will kill them all. Oh, yeah. Actually, if you hit that Function. quad grid icon looking thing, that might do the business. Close this also. Just close all your quad terminals. Grid, okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah. This one too. And then close this. All right. All right. Uh, now hit Control Alt U and Control Alt F. See how instant that was, dude. That's all. Awesome. That's what I want to get you out of the box. Not quite right. there yet. Right. Okay. Um, but I love the fact it. they're the <laughs> colors I, of the I OS. It's kind of brilliant, George. <laughs> and you did this. I was like, you got to make you got to make me a better Ubuntu than Ubuntu, right? right? And right? what's a better Ubuntu than the Ubuntu container image, which is <laughs> baller, right? That's great. Um, yeah, so do this. Um, uh, do we install NeoFetch on this by default? Try it. Try NeoFetch. What? Just Type go. NeoFetch. Oh, okay. Sorry. My bad. Do we have this installed? Yeah. There you go. And then in the Fedora one, type NeoFetch. Man, oh, man. so how do you install a package in Fedora? Do a DNF install NeoFetch. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to be crazy. Oh, not HY. Just Y, I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I fat fingered it. 
Pseudo bang bang. Oh. Pseudo bang bang. For those of you who don't know, you can always pseudo bang bang will run the previous command yes. with pseudo. The bash shortcuts. Are... That's the greatest Unix tip of all time. You'd be surprised, mm -hmm. man. There are people who wrote Kubernetes who didn't know that. You know, yeah, I know. It makes you feel good, you know? Right. Like uh, every, but, every time I can bust out a command line thing for somebody, I feel happy. You know, you, like you will never learn any of all of this, right? So like anytime right. you get, yeah. Yeah. Like that's like people are like, oh, what's homebrew? And I'm like, man, well, that I can is use it in on fast. That God. was fast. Like one terabyte. NVMe, yeah, it's just four gigs of RAM, yeah. and that's old too. That's processor. not even the fast one, I don't think. Right, oh, wait. this is the five. This is the series is, five, is not five? the seven. No, no, I'm talking about DNF. Oh, I don't. Yeah, this is DNF. Yeah, because yeah, there's supposed to be a new fast. Anyway, uh, now type NeoFetch. Okay, that was way faster than it should have been. Chat, do you agree? I've never seen DNF move that fast. I've seen DNF move that fast. You just All don't right. know good DNA. Show the drop down and picks us. Don't worry. We're going to get there, Brian. We're going to get there. All right. This so, drop down? No, no. Or... Hold on. I'll get there. Sorry. I was cheating. You weren't down. supposed to. Uh, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, so see that icon in the top right? It's like the four squares. It looks like a four square. Yes. Yeah. Click on that. Ooh. Yeah. So once Whoa. you do that, that will be all. So if you have. Yeah, if you want to do all that oh, business. Yeah, okay. and you're on a tab. Now, however, uh, type ls in here, mm -hmm. your home directory. Type ls in your Ubuntu container. And the Fedora container. Yep. Wow. So the tool we use, DistroBox, transparently mounts your home directory. So That's you awesome. just have your shit. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> you just have it. You just have it. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's now, awesome. top left, click that. Click that drop down for me. Top left. Right there. Yep. And each of these Ooh. is available as like a drop down for you. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Yep. And now go back in your Fedora menu because there is a command line tool to manage all of these. This thing? Nope. Very top, the Fedora, the logo menu. Oh. Uh, oh not the oh, Fedora oh. terminal. The, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, you're getting the crash. It's like your first day. I was like, come on, man. Why don't you know? It? What, All right. What are you doing? Come on. I'm trying not to be, I'm trying to be as less Linux as possible. <laughs> uh, now click on containers again. Okay. So if you want to set all these up graphically, you can just do it this way. You can right? do it this and way. And then in too. here, you know, you can set keyboard shortcuts. And if you install an app in there, like if there's an app that you need mm -hmm. and it's only a deb, you can open the Ubuntu terminal, install it, and then pin it to your dock. And then it'll wow. do it. Wow. However, awesome. with the Fedora and Ubuntu ones, uh, these are managed by Podbank Quadlets because Ooh. one of the things I don't like about Upstream Fedora is they give you a toolbox, but it's a pet. And I hate that. Okay? Yes. But sometimes you need a pet, right? Right. So if you want a pet, you're going to go into Box Buddy and you're going to make your pet, right? Mm -hmm. okay. However, by default, we want these to be ephemeral. Um, so every day they will get destroyed, they will get updated. Right. So it's it's like a nice clean experience every time. So I like this because sometimes I want an Ubuntu terminal, but then it goes away. Um, so like that's that's the way to go. Um what I would prefer to pet containers is dev containers in the IDE, declarative, checked in per project, per git, right? But That'd getting people dope. there who don't know how to use containers is like the mission. And that will be a long one. So for now, yeah. That's you a good know, point. Yeah, because w what I don't like about this pattern is that it, it encourages people to use these like little VMs, right? Yeah. And people was like, I have five of them. I installed the IDE in each. Yeah, I, I saw yeah, a post yeah, someone yeah. installed oh, VS Code inside of each of one of these. And I'm like, oh, <sighs> God. Yeah, so like there's there's work to do there. Um, Joe Beta, one of the co-creators of Kubernetes, I, I was showing this to him. I was like, I'm so frustrated. Thanks, Thanks Brian. Brian. Um, and I was so, I was like, man, I I duct taped the thing together and I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> you know, so he's been giving me feedback and stuff. And one of the reasons now that we've gone GA is get people like you using it who are using containers, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. tell me, tell me the pattern we should be teaching people, right? Because at the end right. of the day, it's supposed to be a teaching tool, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are your containers. Um, open your host. I mean, this is great. Like I don't have to. Yeah say the ridiculous podman rmi image name blah blah yeah blah, yeah you and know. you shouldn't have to yeah, uh, yeah but show this real quick open a terminal which will all the host is always bound to control alt t okay 
I like that. Control T, off we yep. go. Uh, and then type Podman list. Or a Podman LS, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Duh. Uh, yeah. LS dash A. I'm, I'm yeah. an idiot. Yeah. What do you mean, no A? It's a uh, Podman. It, oh. Jesus. Uh, Podman yeah. PSA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> container uh, yeah. we can do this totally listen we do to this me. for our living yeah, yeah, we yeah, promised yeah, yeah. yes yeah. neither one uh, of us is tired <laughs> yeah so now yeah <laughs> uh go ahead and and open and uh maximize this okay cool yeah does it yes thank you yeah so as you see there the ubuntu toolbox the fedora toolbox we cre mm -hmm. like we created those it'll show so you manage these like you would a normal normal thing um Good. now dot type docker psa Oh, you have an alias here. Oh. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, we need to add you to the group. So it Why is. Why isn't that done just by default? So we thought about that. Yeah. And you have to opt because you have to opt in to put yourself in the Docker group because that is okay, root. Full. What what is the thing I'm supposed to say? Oh, I'm that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah you have to opt rootless. in. Unfortunately, I okay, wanted that makes to, sense. but we can't. That yeah. makes sense, right? Like however, you're escalating privileges. However, we alias that for you into something nice. Type this. You just yeah this space I like. dash dash choose and hit enter. Wow. All right. So here's all the crap we can't automate. Right. So this is like. Okay. We didn't want to do like you blue cuddle. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So if we look Wait, at... is this installed by default? Atuin? Uh no. So if you want to install okay, Atuin, you hit enter here and it will do that for you. Okay, uh, I'll try do it, it later. Oh, okay. okay no, yeah. it's fully fully automated. Boom. Now wow. close yeah, close your terminal and reopen it. Oh my gosh. Come on. Control T, hit up. That's a key. There you go. You have Atuin now. Oh. Atween's amazing. Uh, you it is. Think between your history. Yes. I GitHub sponsor this project. It is like one of my favorite Unix tools of all time. No I, need, I need to sponsor it. You're absolutely right. If yeah. I'm not uh, You just choose again. Okay, choose. Or yeah. uh, you just. No, nah, it doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah. We should probably import your old one. That's a, that's a good. That's a yeah. Good, that's good a good point. tip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was kind of thinking thinking of a new install there. Um, mm -hmm. And we are looking for groups. So type groups, DX group. And hold on. On the right there, it will tell you what it's going to execute, which That's is like dope. really important because you need to be able mm -hmm. to inspect what right. we're doing. And we want to be transparent about that. Right. So we're going to add you to the Docker the, group, yeah. the Inkis group, the LXD group, libvert, because we include all that stuff. And you're a developer, so you know, you're going to use it. Nice. So we do that. Um, and then you're going to have to log out. Okay. Docker, you are getting real Docker. Like we build that as part of the image. There's no aliases. There's no Podman Compose. There's none of that. Like we uh, we are using Podman for system containers and Docker containers uh, for application development. That's one of those things where it's like we were kind of spending a lot of effort being like, well, should we alias this thing? Should we have it? Um, no, you're going to have to log out and log back in of your I sessions. Did. Oh, oh, the whole thing of the whole, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Don't right. worry about that. That's no. right. Never mind. Yeah, you could type new group, new GRP. People say that works, but I've never seen that work. I don't know. What, what does the audience say? Try that. Okay. And now try to run the Docker. Oh, there's. Nope. Yeah. See, everyone says that works. I've never seen that work. Anyway, no. when you reboot all your Docker, the socket will be there. VS cool. Code will connect to it. It won't. Um, and then your VS Code, we do, even though you don't use VS Code. We um, we include the dev containers extension mm -hmm. and the um, remote connection extension. So you should be able to go right into your dev containers and create new stuff. Nice. And you should be good. Uh, this one's good. Type this one. Uh, just hit enter on that one, the change logs. Yeah. This will wow. tell you the change log in the, in the last images, um, which is like really handy. So that was the update that you did. And as you can see that, it's just it the Fedora change all logs. All the way back. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then go back into the chooser. We're just going to browse through a few of these, actually, mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind. No, it's fine. Yeah, let's go to the very top. Oh, Olama's in here? Oh, okay. yeah. So this okay. one, man. This is this, this is freaking baller. What um, is? What, what am I doing? Wait, wait, wait. 
so that's update. Don't do okay. that one because that will update everything at once. That, that'll oh, take a while. That's um, awesome. But we do upgrade everything for you. Like we'll Painful. upgrade brew, your containers, all that stuff. But go go to Olama and just go to the right so you can see what we're we're doing here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I did that too fast. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't run it. We're actually going to show it. Uh, and it aired out. That's weird. I just ran that. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. So um, we will detect if the system has an NVIDIA card or an AMD card and do the right thing. Okay. We include Rockham. So this is amazing, especially mm. on the framework 16. Mm -hmm. The demo I want to give is like, and we shred through Llama. So we have that there. Although there was an error I saw. You want me to run it again? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what that's all about. A llama container already exists. Oh, did you did you try to run it before? Oh, no. you, uh, all right. Oh, I don't wait. And you also need to install the client, but okay. the service should have fired up. What do we want to troubleshoot first? Let's not troubleshoot. Let's just. Okay. I will go through the. Yeah, I will go through these errors later, and then we all figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, mm. I mean, you could, you could type that, or we can keep going through the. Oh, yeah. How are we doing on time? All right, an hour and 15. Let's try to cap it at two. We don't want to get too, yeah. too long here. So distro box new and assemble if you go down. So we give you oh. default boxes, wow. and then there's that drop down. But if you want a command line thing, you can get an arch container, you know, like we assemble mm -hmm. it for you or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this one is useful. I do not understand why distros do not do this. Uh, device info, hit that one. Matt, if you're still listening, this is my favorite. Hit enter. It grabs your status oh. and all your D message and it shoves it into a paste bin. So like in your help channels, you could be just like, <laughs> boom, look at the QR code. I understand why wow. we just had to do it for 15 years. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Right. So instead of type me all your status, you could just say, you just there device you info. It's consistent. We keep yeah. it all in one place. That's awesome. Um, and by default, the CentOS paste bin deletes it in 24 hours. So that's nice. Oh, cool. Um, all right. What else we got in here? Any any other goodies? Um, Let's see it. Uh, screen share. Anyone have? Yeah. So that's a vestigial one. Uh, oh, okay. That's that X Whalen. Oh, God, let's not let's not go you, through that one. Okay. This is just pain. Yeah. Everything's just it. pain. Just close your eyes. Nvidia drivers will come out in the next month, and then all this Wayland X thing will be over. Got it. I do not promise. Uh, let's see. You know, logs of your last boot, your previous boot. PyTorch will will. Um, do an accelerated wow. PyTorch setup for you. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ch I'm gonna change this to the chain guard image, which is like nice and small. Cool. Um, let's see. I don't want to uh, remove. Oh, okay. so you set up cockpit for me? That's not yeah. So what we want to do is on your home lab, you run cockpit, right? And you can yeah. do all your clients, and it's like your. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be someday. <laughs> that's gonna be our open source version of a Chromebook killer, right? Because yeah. people like Chromebooks for the management. Not right. just cheap computers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And some folks with the Ultramarine project at Fira Labs, they got Bluefin running on an x86 Chromebook nice. with a stock firmware. So it's like, huh? Ooh. Oh, 2024 okay. going to be interesting. Uh, and then uh, the last one. Let me just show the update. So if you type, uh, just update the very bottom one. Oh, toggle okay. updates is interesting. If you go on a trip. And you're like, nope, no daily oh, updates. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of brilliant. Yeah, and also when you travel, uh, remember these are container layers, and we do not have diffs yet, so they can get a little thirsty, like Got especially it. on DX because the image is a little large. Um, but I'm in com communications with the Podman team and stuff. You, we're going to get hence, our container diffs. Hence why I've got a terabyte drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, you know, you can also sh if. Uh, if you're storage averse, wait to see how much Olama downloads. Oh my God. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Just do an update and just hit enter. So here we, we use a tool called top grade that Ooh. will go. There it is. Updating the containers that you made. Wow. It updates okay. the entire system. This kind of, so like one of the bummers, someone told me, I can't believe I have to deal with this. Someone was like, I love this, but I miss updating my Linux. Right. And I was like, well, we Aww. made that problem go away, but it also, I don't know, it's oddly satisfying, hit Q. It's oddly satisfying to like do the do the Linux thing, right? So it's like, right. well, if you're going to do a manual update, we're going to make it look baller, right? Right. So there's a tool called Topgrade, um, which has a GitHub repo, and it's just a script or a program that finds all of the package managers on your system and upgrades them, 
right? And then wow. it just gives you. So it's like even our manual update is like awesome looking. Um, and when you, I ran this on an old system on my old Ubuntu system, and I had forgotten how much stuff you install and you forget. Oh my god! Hip, yeah, cargo, awful. NPM, and I was just like, man, this is just, this is just, you know, computers are a mess. It's so terrible. Yeah. Dude. So this gives you that, you know, if you're like. You know, I dig this, but that whole automatic update thing is too much for me, mm -hmm. right? You can toggle them off, do it manually, you know, get that, get that manualness back in your life. Um, nice. So we've got that. Is there anything we haven't covered yet that has? Uh, let's see. Well, literally just a script that prints a bunch of scrolling text. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. It's nice. Yeah. I actually want to scream at more. I'm always complaining to Brian, right? I'm like, dude, pipe it through more charm. So, you know, charm.sh. Oh. It's like all, yeah, it's like all beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, oh, get more emojis in here. So we're trying to, yeah, uh, we're trying to do Why that not? there. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing. I mean, I, I'll set up, I'll, I'll do all these like longer ones later, but yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. configure shell. Thank you. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. If you, so this is, this is an interesting thing is like an upstream vanilla fedora, mm -hmm. right? They don't, they don't put shells on the image. So people who no. don't use bash have to layer it. That kind of sucks. Right. Ooh. But you also understand that they're a generic operating system. Right. So like yes. they have to keep the image small. Right. right. We're yeah. like, this is a developer focused thing. Right. Just sh ship all three shells, you know, and like yeah, the exactly. user will pick. Install right. OBS Studio Portable. Yeah. So this is a container. I actually don't like this one. Um, oh. Uh, but Wim Wimpy made this uh, for a reason. It's, this will install a container, mm -hmm. an Ubuntu container, and put OBS in it, and then a ton and tons of plugins that uh, Wimpy likes. So it's useful in that regard. Um, I don't like putting graphical applications inside of containers that way. I prefer to just use the flat pack, which is designed for graphical applications, but it doesn't Makes have sense. as many plugins. So well, yeah, I mean, not it's, in the it's one of those look. Yeah. I don't, hey, man, not my. You know, yeah, not my circus, monkey. not my monkeys. Yeah, yeah. Pick what you exactly. want. Um, oh, this one is interesting for DX. Install JetBrains toolbox there. If you go to that one, install JetBrains. So, yeah. So okay. because because VS Code is on the image, people are like, I like JetBrains. A lot of people use JetBrains, right? Right. Um, and Jet. So if you go, like distros are always trying to package things, and they're always like behind or slow or something Way like behind. that. And, yeah. Or, and like. If you install them via flat pack, now you have to deal with that model, which doesn't match how the rest of us do like stuff, right? Um, then then you have a thing where like you're the person using JetBrains, but totally different from everyone else on your team. And that's right. I, I hate yeah. that. Um, so they wrote a tool that basically um runs in your home directory, and it's like a little thing that shows all their products, and you click, 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 it installs wow. all the dependencies for you. It just handles everything, like totally isolated in your home directory. And it is like way supported, way better than anything we could do. So we just script that up for you. Damn. And if you're a JetBrains person, boom, you're good to go. Um, so that's that's, awesome. that's that's why we did that. Yeah. Um, someone's asking, why didn't you make you just to you just dash dash choose? We are still we're still struggling with that because also it's nice when you know what you're doing to type it. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's the kind of thing that we make. Yeah, an alias might be neat. I'm I might try to personally on my system alias to choose to like you know two two characters or something like that yeah and that's all we're, that's all the choose is it's like fancy fzf which is yeah. hilarious to me that is kind um, of funny and all these are just files which are just like lightweight make where files. are they uh they're new it shows you right there see where it says user oh. share you blue os just file yep oh, come on share you blue os just file. Oh, um, there might be an include in there. Hang on. We'll just do that. Uh, you said that. Yeah. Include. So there's all our stuff, actually. We That's where yeah. we put all of our stuff, right? Cool. So in there, there's the image info, your just file. There's your MOTD. If you go in there, you'll yeah, see the, the quad list, markdown. the whole nine yards. Okay. Yeah. We, we try to put everything in there. We try to keep everything nice and Unix so you know. Nice. You nice. know what you have and what's ours and what is what's Fedora's. There's your top grade dot toml, right? So if you're like, I don't want you to update my certain containers or whatever, you can yeah. so you can actually copy that in dot dot config slash top grade. Um 
one of the nice things about this model is since user is read only, you can't go in there and accidentally jack up a system config file. So the model kind of forces you to copy it into, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I got to do the whole path. To... Yep. Thanks, Matt. Woo. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. So if you're like, I don't want you to upgrade my brew stuff, you would copy mm -hmm. this to dot config slash top grade, right? Okay. But one of the nice things is, is like if you jack up your config, you always have a copy this. of every config on the system on the read-only part of the disk, and that's useful. Nice. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. no kidding. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, yep. oh, I wish I could just restore this to the default yeah. first. Does anyone have a pristine Etsy app sources dot list? Right, you know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, like, I can't tell you how many times I've like asking for a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Spun up a, a VM just to I figure I couldn't quit out. Vim, so I accidentally deleted my sources dot list. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think that's basically it. What what else do we want to say? Oh, right click. I, I want to talk about the wallpapers just a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. let's do it. So uh Jacob Schnur did these. Oh um, hang on. What's the hide everything button? No hide. Uh control alt D, I think hides everything. What the, the, there's a shortcut for that. Uh a super D. Control alt D. No, there's a there's there definitely is a minimize everything button. I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. Oh, your prompt is Starship by default because we like it very sleek. Minimalist. I noticed that. Uh, yeah. I'll have to learn it. It's kind of. It's okay if you have a cool prompt. Please let me know. I would love to be. You just choose Bling prompt or something. And well, we go through things in there. Go through the default. Uh, oh my ZSH prompts. No, no. See, I'm busy. Uses. I'm busy. So the way we do things around here is you guys. Well, somebody else has to figure. Yeah, it out. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I yeah. get it. But like, that's <laughs> that's what I would do. I would be like, okay, like give you the exact same options, but just do it in yeah. the Starship or whatever. Yeah. Because everyone's like, "Are you gonna go find all the cool prompts?" I was like, "There no. was a period in my life when I would have done this." Yeah. The, now exactly. the way I do, you know, now that we have that sustainability aspect of open source, it's like if, if somebody go. cares, they'll PR it. And if not, they won't. Super key. Age. So, do, do, do. Oh, boom! Nice. Uh, all right. So right click and do the wallpaper chooser. So Jacob Schnur did these, and he did the the animals and stuff, and then the photorealistic one was done by Andy Frazier. Um, these are oh, two paleo wow. artists that I commissioned to do the work. Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, this is my default on Mac. This one's really Oh, cool. really? Yeah. So like, look, yeah. on, look at this. Check this one out. Oh. Yeah. It's got all these cool, like, run CI. There's your apps. Yeah. Code. Adjust volume. But it's like yeah. all keys. And like, it has a light and a dark. But I'm gonna switch it back to uh, the default because I like the default. Yeah, Come on. don't tell Matt. But now that Matt's gone, um, when you're in a framework, we're gonna give you a special framework. <gasps> nice uh, wallpaper. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and on the 16, um, Kyle got like the DGPU working with Switcheroo and all this kind of stuff. It's gonna be oh wow. Sorry, oh, so this one is awesome. This one is is from uh, uh, the the Space Needle. Oh That's yeah, from Seattle. Yeah. yeah, so that was uh, XC is how they spell their name. I don't know how to pronounce that. No. Um, uh, but they were a colleague of Brian's and contributed this. And it's kind of the uh, Seattle home of cloud native thing. And it was nice. the one day in every fifteen years where there's a blue sky in all of Seattle and not a cloud in the sky. Right. And it was just a beautiful thing. Wow. I, I would like to figure out a way to have like a service that has like our community wallpapers and stuff because. I just, I just want someone. It's like, can a bunch of people who love wallpapers just like give me right. a thing, you know? Right. And, and like, I, I want to help do that stuff. So the artwork and stuff is all um, designed around like nature. Uh, we pick the dinosaurs because of evolution, right? Like, we want to evolve the Linux desktop mm -hmm. to the next step, and we're going to give you the tools to do it. So, um, I noticed you had seasons in here. It automatically yeah. figures that out too. Yeah, so what happens is is on that day, someone PRs the default thing in GitHub and it just builds in the image. Yeah, so, so auto, we say oh, spring. I, we say can I automate summer. that with like a GitHub action or something maybe? Yeah, right now we're doing it by hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because also in order to set these, you have to do this GNOME XML stuff. Uh, that is God. probably some of the worst anything I've ever seen of anything. 
yeah <laughs> like it is even gnome developers are like you sure you want to do this i was like yes yeah. <laughs> must have it you know? <laughs> i mean i do um, love this one to be honest with you yeah that's a photorealistic one i'm gonna have him i'm gonna have him do a, a few other ones one of the things you know once uh once the donations cover for, like for the github infrastructure and stuff yeah yeah like i want the artist to have like a thread and be like hey you know if you have any ideas you, you know what like do you want insert, to see Bluefin do? Insert you know, card whatever. here and like he'll yeah, and then if some people want to help him. raise money, the um show the winter one, which is right there, that one. The last not that one. Down okay. one. That one, yeah. So this one's kind of cool because um, I mean I really like this one too. Yeah. Yeah. So at night it shows this uh this is an Anukasaurus. This if you're Canadian, this is your this is your Tyrannosaur. Um <laughs> But in the daytime, because they fade s slowly, um, there's a Therizinosaur on the other side. So, like throughout the day, it, oh, it fades out. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. So I want I want to do cooler things around this that are like subtle. Um, yeah. That's and it dope. like follows follows your themes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. Anyone have any questions? Yeah. yeah. I... There's no clouds in the sky. Quick, take a picture of the, of the cloud <laughs> native desktop. That's it. <laughs> That's that's I mean I should just that's go why to the that internet is amazing. That is such a great quote. You, tweet that, please. Actually, take a picture of this when we're done. Take a picture of this, tweet it, and we'll tag them, and then we'll see. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. This is the this is the DX image. This, this is, is awesome. DX no, image. but that's the thing. Yeah. Like the DX image has all the stuff. Like you've taken the choice paralysis out of it for me right like yeah i i know what the you blue way of doing things is yeah, yeah. i don't know and what that comes i would from do Ubuntu, on my right? own on yeah. fedora right yeah. like who knows what i would set up like you have stuff in here auto you know like installed by default that Isn't i don't that think beautiful? a lot of people would use like this yeah. is awesome yeah, I don't this know. Tool if, is awesome. I don't know if yeah, it'll actually work, but no, wait we'll until see. you use it. Yeah, no, no, no work. Um, <laughs> you still had to log into your group, so that will that probably won't work until you log yeah, in. Yeah, you're right. Um, actually, no, hit new. Oh, yeah, no, it did something. Yeah, there you go. There's your VM. Yeah, yeah look at that. Ta -da. Yeah, Take but one of the things in the tagline people ask me, you say the Ubuntu spirit built on Fedora technology, right? Is like I love Fedora's technology. Yes. Right. But because it is community driven, there is a lot of community. I mean, you know, right. The community is the same way. It's like, well, we shouldn't, you know, da, 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 da. whereas like in Ubuntu, it was like, all right, pick the one thing that it's good at. And that's what we're going to do. You know, it's like, you know, we could sit or waft around all day or we someone just pick something. Right. So mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like I got sick of people arguing about GNOME upstream, the dock extensions da, 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 da. and i was like you know what doc on the bottom app indicators top right let's move on mm -hmm. to some other problem like nobody cares like if you have an opinion on that you know how to turn it off um however if you do like the gnome upstream experience you could just shut off the extensions and it'll look just like real fedora right exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah just just to let folks know if you want to contribute to you know universal blue it's universal dash blue.org yeah, new website uh, project fired Blue, up. yeah i saw it it was great yeah. Um, projectbluefin.io is where you can get the ISOs for this version, uh, the yep. DX version. And, and bazite.gg will yes. get you the gamer one. So, uh, which, oh which yeah, we'll have, let's do that yeah, real okay. quick. Let's install yeah. Steam real quick. No, we did the Steam thing. Oh uh, yeah. Like I just got to install the game and let it rip. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be like a bunch of gigs. Yeah. But, um, lots of gigs. Bazite, the gaming one will give you choice of KDE or GNOME. Also great for HTPCs. So like your oh, your yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So I have my gaming rig set up. That's how I use Bazite. So yeah, um, like, and it works on the uh, the Lenovo Legion Go. You can run on your Steam Deck, and um, the Asus ROG Ally. So it gives you all that gamer stuff. Everything you read about gaming on Linux.com. Like yeah, we literally just like every time I read something awesome on GamingLinux.com, I'm like, we have this right, and of course we do. So that's like amazing. Yeah. Um, because you I just gotta have it. I ain't got time. I want all that stuff, but I ain't just got time to set all that up. So why not have Kyle do it for me? Exactly. Um and then get aurora.dev, I believe, is the um the KDE version of this. So if you like everything you see here, but you prefer K's instead of G's, yeah, you know, strikes instead of dollar bills. I mean, 
I would love to see a world where I could switch between the two to evaluate. So actually, you can rebase between both. We currently do not recommend that because no, the system stuff is fine. Yeah. The home user directory, they stomp on each other. Yeah. Like that's going to be the thing. Like when I go to Fossil, I'm going to be like, all right, who do we got to get in the room to sort this business? Right. Like <laughs> we got to make Gnome and Giddy just at least play nicely. Yeah. Yeah. However, if you do do custom, and, and I know someone's going to do this, right? Someone could literally make every desktop in one image. Yeah. You know? No, I know. And what I want to do, what I wish people would do is um, do like a retro. I would love some, a retro one that has all the old window managers like enlightenment and stuff Ooh, but it yeah. all works on fedora yeah and, you know do that retro thing and i you log in and it looks like the amiga like wouldn't right. that be awesome that like I, I i'm looking forward to seeing people do that because that would make so an and an, a retro computer appliance boom that would done. be awesome that'd be so, so cool. baller yeah um window maker hell yeah yeah so <laughs> i did i did don't be creeped out or anything like i literally liked your skin so much oh, yeah bought one myself this yep. is dope i loved it um like my favorite colors are orange and blue and this was on george's laptop and i was like yeah i literally want that <laughs> yeah i i picked it because orange for ubuntu blue for fedora right fedora, that's, that's like, a brilliant right? that's a thing but i'm trying to blend here is like a little I've bit got, i want a little bit of everything i would know? love to have like <laughs> half of blue bezel half an orange bezel somehow right like because the hot keys into the toolbox are dope yeah, those, don't those terminals look awesome? Christian heard yeah. it like totally. Those are this experience. Those are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. like um, this is this is next level, and I love it. And I love the fact that a couple of tweaks here and tweaks there, and it'll be exactly how I want it. But everything's yeah. just there at my fingertips. Yeah, and the secret is, I hate this. Mm. Oh, we're, that's the thing, right? Like, like I uh, hate compared this to too. where we want compared yeah. to where we want to go. Like you know, yeah. It's like I love and I hate Kubernetes, right? You know what I mean? Like exactly, right? Like, like I like I, I don't want to depend upon Kubernetes in my daily life, right? Yeah. Like it's I want like to the, work on it, but not yeah, right. It's like, like our mission for this year is to find people who can make that container experience awesome, right? Like we need the yeah. UI person talking to the terminal person, you know, talking to Luca who makes DistroBox. Mm -hmm. We got to engage with the Podman team. The Podman desktop team actually, oh man, should should have mentioned that. Um, Podman oh, desktop, yeah, uh, that team gives you a whole GUI that does like all of this, like so it gives for, you like all this bling stuff. Yeah, like um, I, uh, I might have just dunked on Podman recently on Twitter. It, it, it's nothing uh -oh. personal, y'all. I will probably yeah. put Podman desktop on here since that's what's on here by default. Um, yeah, and. Yeah. It lists your Docker containers along with Podman. Gives them right. a little it nice. Gives them all. It's nice. It's I like nice. it. But yeah. here's the thing. Sometimes Docker just works, especially yeah. on Mac, right? Like Yeah, and also ecosystems, right? Yeah. Anytime you go to something GitHub is going to give you Docker instructions, right? Mm -hmm. And at, for a while I was like what we need to do is write a guide to teach people how to translate that into Podman. I was like or, or. <laughs> just give people the hacker and just have it all work, you know? So like, yeah, they're, they're, you know, some people are going to call that a compromise, but also, you know, uh, Pete Goodall, I worked with him at Canonical for like a long time, right? And yeah. he works at Docker and he goes, I freaking love Fedora. Like I love right. Fedora. I want to use this. Yeah. But I need, I have to have Docker, you know? And, right. you know, when you actually talk to people who work at Red Hat and stuff, they're like, we have customers that have Docker, right? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. the, you know, the practicality of cloud is like, we know that you're going to have Podman, you're going to have Docker, you're going to have Cryo, mm -hmm. you're going to have mm -hmm. the 35,000 ways to write a container, you know, yeah. uh, container runtime, you know, like all of that stuff. So at some point, it's just like, we're not a general purpose distro, so just yeah. give the developers what they want, right? So that's yeah, the kind of the mantra that we're shooting for. Want. Exactly. Yeah. And with uh, that, that's an, that's an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Anything man. Else? This is nah. awesome. Thank you so much for doing it. We kind of we kind of planned this last minute, so I appreciate that. Well, but it's kind of my own fault, so. It's okay. Like, the, the the framework thing caught me by surprise today. I was like, oh, we're doing that now? Because Matt had mentioned it. I was like, oh, I didn't cool. know, like, how serious he was, right? Yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, uh, so the fact that they're going all in, and then um, they provided us with the hardware, and Kyle already has it enabled. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, we're going to try to get it for release, but, like, shipping snafu, so, like, it's going to take a few more days. Mm -hmm. um, and then once everything's ready to go, 
the dream, man. You, you get a, a company that makes hardware that loves Linux, right? And you got yeah. a community of people that love the thing that want to make it awesome. Yeah. Right. And then Fedora gave us the tools to do it. So we're going to do it. Like, yeah, why not? Hell yeah. This is the laptop I want to grow up with. I would have loved to have grown up with, right? Yeah. Imagine learning Linux that, on this yeah, instead of the trying fact to get that wireless I to work. Could, like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It just, yeah. Like this is, this oh, is. Augie. Hi. Sorry. Hey, buddy. I see yeah, an old yeah, yeah. friend in, uh, in um, chat. So yeah, like this is the Linux I wanted in, you know, 99 when I was like, I'm really done with the whole reinstall every week yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was but, like, at some point you're like, Ubuntu's not going to make this for you, right? Like, no. And, and the desktop is still kind of a place where getting that support from large companies is still like a difficult, it's incredible. It's a difficult value proposition, right? Yeah. Like, so, you know, kind of the, the Easter egg here, the mission is actually like, you know, I want to prove that these enthusiasts here can make a market if you give them the right hardware and you give them the right software, right? Because Bingo. as much as I love Bluefin, you mentioned you work at a place, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't run Bluefin, right? But yeah. if Red Hat made a, you know, enterprise grade thing that had the full support of your company, mm -hmm. right? That's what I want them to build, right? right? And it's like Linux never got to that point where it's like, you know, I know every Linux shop in the industry, right? Yeah. You, get, that's... you go in there, you know what they give you? They give you a Mac, right? Yep. So like they don't have an option because all the options up until this point, right? Have not didn't have this level of reliability, right? And right. Like, yeah. So that is that is what we're going to roll with, y'all. It's awesome. Yes. ARM 60. I cannot wait. We need GitHub builders and um, that'll happen this year, I think. We're definitely getting the GitHub builders this year. Yeah. Yeah. Pick Fedora is nice because they have full that's the um that's the Linux you want for ARM Max is Asahi. So Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. So hopefully someday, knock on wood, that'll be another experience. Give people an option. So Yeah, awesome, dude. Well, thank all you. Right. I appreciate it. Find um, us on our Discord. Thanks, everybody. You're all awesome. See you later, y'all. <laughs>